Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Disconcerting media reports are beginning to circulate about the state of UK spaceports. Cornwall doesn't have a launch provider, even though it's the only licensed spaceport in the UK, and Saxavord is supposedly out of money and unable to pay their contractors, which has led to a launch being cancelled by High Impulse. Is all of this true, or is this just another example of media exaggeration? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I am going to be heading back to the UK on the 30th, uh, landing at Heathrow actually on the morning of the 1st. Uh, looking forward to heading back, have some lodgings established actually uh, for the next two months, December and January. Really like where I'm going to be staying, like my landlord. The whole arrangement is pretty good, so looking forward to all of that. However, the big reason that I was moving to Europe was to cover European space flight. And there are a number of stories circulating around, thankfully not with a lot of the mainstream media, but nonetheless alleging that these spaceports are in trouble, or at least the two that we are the most familiar with, both Spaceport Cornwall and Saxavord. Now, the first and most famous of these two spaceports, Spaceport Cornwall, well, the problem with that spaceport, at least as far as people seem to be concerned, is the fact that it has no launch provider. Virgin Orbit, after a failed launch attempt at uh, Spaceport Cornwall, as most of us remember when I was covering that whole thing, well, after the failure of that launch, Virgin Orbit's financial situation fell apart, they went bankrupt and got chopped to pieces. Ironically, the companies that bought them out, two of their competitors, are now making use of their facilities, which have proven to be extremely useful indeed. We'll get to more detail about that here in a little bit, but the most troubling news is a story, or a couple of stories, that have been circulating around about the state of Saxavord. Apparently, Saxavord can no longer pay their contractors, or so these journalists are claiming and the progress that has been made at this spaceport, so promising, so impressive, everything that they've been able to accomplish up to this point in such a short amount of time, well, all of that has come to a grinding halt, which is very bad news indeed for a number of launch providers that were planning to use this spaceport, foremost of which is RFA, or Rocket Factory Augsburg, out of Germany. However, is any of this actually true? Well, I took the time to reach out to both of these spaceports. In addition to that, I also reached out to RFA to get more information. And I'm just going to give you a spoiler right now. Things are not nearly so dire as the media would like you to believe. In 2022, I was so optimistic about what was happening in the United Kingdom, in spite of the concerns of some of my viewers in that country who claimed that spaceflight has had many starts and stops over the decades, with Britain eventually losing interest in the concept and wasting a lot of time and a lot of money in the process. Now, Spaceport Cornwall was one of the most promising parts of UK spaceflight development, simply simply because it was the first spaceport to become fully licensed. Indeed, Spaceport Cornwall remains the only horizontal spaceport, licensed horizontal spaceport, that is, in all of Western Europe. It is the fall of Virgin Orbit that put this spaceport into a tight spot, but let me go ahead and get the easy part out of the way. That is to say, Spaceport Cornwall is the easy part of this story, because they have never been in any sort of serious trouble because of how the spaceport team built this entire business model to begin with. Very little of it was actually built on launch. Instead, it was built around the idea 
idea of using the spaceport as a nexus for a collection of aerospace companies known as the Cornwall Space Cluster. And ever since then, the spaceport has been an important part of spaceflight development and spaceflight education. It's also important to note that Spaceport Cornwall does not only have all the same facilities in place that they had when I visited them a few months ago, they have actually more facilities. They now have a full-fledged integration facility and an operations facility. Let's have a look at both of them. First, the integration facility, which I saw the last time I was at the spaceport. This includes a 9 meter tall ISO 8 clean room, which can be incredibly useful not just for integration purposes, but also for experimental work that various companies might need for highly sensitive technologies. It includes an integration hall with 8 870 square meters worth of workspace and direct access to a 20,000 square meter outdoor test facility. This does not require a launch provider. There are many companies that can make use of this facility, but even more impressive is the operations facility, which was not active at the time when I visited the spaceport, and man, have they added a lot more. The ground floor includes another multi-user clean lab and two two additional labs all on the ground floor plus a collaboration area and office space on the first floor. Yeah, in Europe, that's how they do things. Ground floor and first floor, not first floor and second floor like we do here in the United States. In addition to that, they have an operations facility to be used for either training purposes or for new launch providers when they begin to make use of the spaceport. And that, of course, is the most exciting thing of all, the new launch providers that are going to be flying out of the spaceport. Several horizontal launch providers are being pursued right now, but a couple have already signed on. The first of these is Space Engine Systems out of Canada, who are designing a single stage to orbit system or a space plane capable of delivering substantial payloads and ultimately human crews to suborbital and orbital trajectories and even to the moon. Ross Hulbert, business development manager at Spaceport Cornwall, had this to say, quote, We are really excited to welcome the Space Engine Systems team to Cornwall Wall. The company is developing cutting-edge technology and from the very first meeting displayed a determination to collaborate with what we are doing in Cornwall. We look forward to supporting their growth and celebrating their future success. A lease has already been signed for this company to perform hypersonic tests out of the spaceport. Very exciting indeed, and by the way, these arrangements were made well after the demise of Virgin Orbit. But in my opinion, Sierra Space is the most promising partner that Spaceport Cornwall has. It has been the intention of Sierra Space to execute European missions with Dream Chaser, landing the space plane at Spaceport Cornwall, not just using it as an emergency landing field as New Key Airport was used for in the past, but rather exclusive European missions making use of Dream Chaser, perhaps even using air on 6 to launch the space plane up into orbit in the first place. Dream Chaser is compatible with any rocket that has a 5 meter fairing and a sufficiently long fairing at that which includes the Ariane 6 but once again it isn't absolutely necessary. It can provide an amazing service to European customers by allowing them to launch their payloads into orbit whether they be experiments or manufacturing processes. It can carry over five metric tons worth of payload and then bring it straight back to Europe instead of requiring these customers to go all the way to Cape Canaveral to pick up their payloads. Spaceport Cornwall is the only spaceport in Europe that is licensed to receive a Dream Chaser spacecraft. And by the way, it can not only help the spacecraft to land, it can also unload the various payloads on board through its very extensive integration facilities. No, any negative thoughts about Spaceport Cornwall are completely unfounded. This spaceport has an excellent future ahead of it. However, the situation with Saxavord is a little bit more troubling. Well, at least on the surface. If you dig a little bit deeper, it really isn't that troubling at all. 
According to Ars Technica, who by the way is quoting another news source known as European Spaceflight Reports, the Shetland Space Center, also known as Saxavord, owes approximately one million pounds to Shetland-based DITT construction for the development of the spaceport. Apparently, the company does not have the funds to pay the amount after a 139 million pound debt facility promised by CEO Frank Strang in May failed to materialize. Once again, this is allegedly. The construction of Saxavort Spaceport began in late March of 2022, and it's amazing how much they've actually been able to achieve in a short amount of time. Incidentally, there are many reasons as to why Saxavord may be having some financial issues because many of their customers are having financial issues. For example, ABL, which is a small launch provider backed up by Lockheed Martin, they have yet to reach orbit and don't have any immediate plans for launching from Saxavord given the fact that they've been unable to reach orbit from their current base in Kodiak in Alaska. In addition to that, Astra, another small launch provider out of the United States is also running into problems. So given these two companies and the difficulties that they're going through, it's not terribly surprising that Saxavord might be running into issues as well. However, Saxavord had a really good business model, and that is to provide services to a wide variety of launch providers all over the world. This includes Skyrora, who are still moving forward towards their maiden launch, and also High Impulse out of Germany and Rocket Factory Augsburg. Now, of course, High Impulse apparently has backed out of launching their first suborbital flight out of Saxavord and have chosen to go to Australia instead because their launch facilities in Saxavord are not yet ready. That being the case, though, High Impulse has obviously not lost faith in Saxavord. Why am I saying that? Well, because on November 15th, the two companies signed a letter of intent to conduct two suborbital launches from Saxavord from August 2024 onwards. This will be followed by the first orbital launch from High Impulse from late 2025 onwards, rising to full commercial operations out of Saxavord by 2030. Saxavord business development manager Robin Huber, who, by the way, great guy, had an opportunity to talk extensively with him last year, said, quote, High Impulse Technologies have been an integral part of the Saxivore journey and a fantastic supporter of our vision. They carried out their first tests in Shetland in early 2021 and have been testing and honing their technology both there and in Germany ever since. So we are delighted to announce that we have reached an agreement for a program that will culminate in the company having a permanent presence in Unst, which is where Saxavord is located, as it gears up towards full commercial operations. By the way, this happened several days before the Ars Technica article came out, and yet Ars Technica conveniently did not mention it, because after all, it wouldn't have made the story quite as exciting if you discovered that maybe things were going fine at Saxavord after all. And by the way, some of the details mentioned in some of these articles are frankly petty and very sensationalistic. The Daily Record, for example, had this to say about a traveler from Dallas, Texas, and what they posted in May of 2022. Quote, no fence, gate, or warning notices, so we drove in to look at a bunch of derelict ex-military buildings that were almost falling down. If this really is the future of UK space sites, then they need to get their act together. Now that is simply stupid and arrogant talking and something that I might expect from someone from Dallas. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Never mind, sorry, it's because of what I think about the Cowboys. Anyway, that having been said, at the time when this visit took place in May of 2022, it's true, not a lot had been done. However, the military buildings that they're referring to, I lived there for several days. Yes, it's an old RAF base, perhaps it's in need of some renovation, but it's perfectly livable and maybe not as nice as a Dallas hotel, but nevertheless, a perfectly 
functional set of buildings that does the job extremely well. Keep in mind, this is not a government facility. It's a private facility with pretty limited funding. And yet, look what they've accomplished. This launch pad is ready to go. RFA is going to be conducting their first ever orbital launch attempt in just a few months from Saxavord. Their plans remain completely unchanged. I reached out to my contacts at RFA. There's a lot that they told me that has to stay off the record. But what I can say is this. I am confident that everything that has been said about Saxavord up to this point is being being grossly exaggerated. There are many reasons why contractors don't get paid. As a matter of fact, I work for a nonprofit with a contractor who we refused to pay because they did a lot of work that wasn't up to code. I'm not saying that this is what happened at Saxavord, but I am saying that if there were serious problems with this spaceport, RFA would be changing their plans because they have lots of important customers on this first flight, and they certainly don't want to fly out of an incomplete spaceport. In addition, I reached out to Saxavord themselves, and they told me a fair amount of things that also has to stay off the record. However, I did some investigations on my own as well. The major thing that needs to happen is the CAA needs to license Saxavord as a vertical launch spaceport. Once this is done, all of their financials are going to be thoroughly investigated and published. And by the way, Saxavord is welcoming all of this. And once all of this does become public, and once Saxavord is licensed, funding should be a lot easier to acquire. In the meantime, however, plans with both High Impulse and RFA for the most part are moving forward without significant adjustment. The only adjustment is the fact that High Impulse wants to launch as quickly as possible and Australia will be able to manage that more effectively than Saxavord can. However, RFA is going to be launching out of Shetland very soon with no changes to their plans whatsoever. And that will be an extremely exciting moment in the history of spaceflight, period. We are talking about the first vertical commercial launch out of Western Europe. And that is a moment I don't intend to miss. As a matter of fact, I plan to cover it in person. Thank you very much for watching. Please like please subscribe. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon so I can make these kinds of journeys to Shetland and elsewhere to bring you unusual stories in spaceflight from around the world. And as always, stay angry about space.